All right, joining me now is Liberal MP Julian Lisa. Julian, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Shari. Good to be with you. Look, we're going to get into the ceasefire issue, but I'd just like to ask your reaction um, to these revelations that at least one Australian who's sponsoring Palestinians coming to Australia has expressed clearly concerning extremist views online. Well, Australia is a country based on Judeo-Christian values, and one of those important values is the sanctity of human life. The idea of supporting martyrdom or jihad is about as far from Australian values as I can possibly imagine. I think it's very important that the government, when assessing people who are coming to this country, does the proper security checks. That doesn't matter where people have come from, but it's particularly important in areas where people are coming from war zones. The idea that we can assess people quickly, um, I think, is wrong. Um, the history of this demonstrates that we need to take our time to ensure that the people who are coming to Australia are subject to the appropriate security and, uh, and other checks. Mm. So overnight, um, well, yesterday, we saw that the Australian government joined with 152 other countries in supporting the United Nations vote that calls for a ceasefire. This, in reality, means that Israel should stop fighting Hamas. Julian, what would this mean practically if Israel were to follow, you know, what Australia wants and retreat at this point? I think we have to remember who Hamas is. Hamas is a terrorist organisation. It's a terrorist organisation listed in our own country as such. And we should believe Hamas when they say in their charter that they want to wipe Israel off the map, where they want to see the murder of Jews all over the world. That is what, is, what Hamas is committed to. And we saw on the 7th of October that extraordinary set of scenes where the, the largest uh, single murder of Jews since the Holocaust, 1,200 people, people attending music festivals, sadistic and satanic um, rapes, murders, capturing of children, abduction of Holocaust survivors. Uh, this is what has led to the incursion in Gaza. It's led to this incursion because Israel has a duty to keep its country safe. The important thing here is to remove Hamas as a terrorist threat from Israel and from the world. A ceasefire only legitimises Hamas. A ceasefire only gives Hamas time in order to, uh, to, to, uh, to, to uh, increase its activities in Gaza. What we want to see is Hamas moved out of Gaza. Um, the only way to do that is to allow Israel to get on with its operations. Look, I'm interested in your thoughts on how Penny Wong in particular, but also the Prime Minister, continually lectures Israel on how it fights this war, this enemy on its doorstep who's kidnapped uh, so many hostages, children, babies, women, the elderly, um, and yet it's not taking control of the problem of anti-Semitism that's happening under its own watch in Australia. I can't remember a time, Shari, in my life where the level of anti-Semitism is as high as it's been today. I think the epicentre of anti-Semitism is sadly on our university campuses. Uh, I'm part of a, a bipartisan group who's been trying to uh, encourage universities to sign up to the uh, International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance definition of anti-Semitism, which, which recognises illegitimate criticism of Israel uh, mm. as a form of anti-Semitism. And sadly, so few of our universities are signed up to this. I'd like to see greater leadership from the government in relation to dealing with anti-Semitism at home. Uh, the resolutions at the UN are important because they're an important uh, uh, um, position in terms of Australia's values. Um, but the most important thing that the government can do is focusing on what it can do to, to, to turn down the level of anti-Semitism at home. But on this UN resolution, I think mm. the decision-making around it uh, looks shambolic. We had a, a situation where the government changed the foreign policy of the country yet again. Yeah. I supported the Prime Minister's resolution on the 16th of October, mm. where he and Peter Dutton moved a motion that recognised Israel's right to defend itself. But in terms of this vote, the only other minister he consulted with was Penny Wong. This is a matter that should have gone to the National Security Committee of Cabinet. Mm. There are agencies under the control of people like Mark Dreyfus, like Richard Miles and like Claire O'Neill, whose, mm. whose, whose thoughts and views should have been brought to bear. And maybe if they had been brought into the discussion, there may well have been a different outcome. This shows the Prime Minister, Prime Minister doesn't have confidence in his own ministers and is an example of the shambolic decision-making we have seen right from the start on matters to do with Israel coming from this government. Yeah, and, and you could call it a captain's call, seeing as we know we've played on this program many times um, the comments that Albanese has made throughout his career about Israel, and they've been only ever very critical. 
Well, it's not just a captain's call because you brought Penny Wong in here and Penny Wong's doctrine on Israel has been a doctrine of moral equivalence. Yep. Peter Dutton is right. Yep. This is a time for moral clarity and what the government has conti continually demonstrated is moral weakness on this question. Julian, Lisa, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thank you, Appreciate Sherry. It.